Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. This is another very special NPD. No, that's not a Canadian political party. That's New Pen Day. Actually, it should be NPDD, New Pen Day for Doug. And since it is another YouTube revenue pen, it should be NYTRPDD, but that's way too long an acronym. I'll stick with the TLAs, NPD. This is my new Leonardo Affezzina Italiana Furore Salt 1.1 millimeter stub, or LOIFS 1.1S. I got it from Yoast Applebaum in Laren, Netherlands. His customer service and his prices are second to none, and you should really check out his online shop. I'll put the link to his website in the video description. This pen left his hand and arrived at my door in five days. Wonderful. This is one of the most beautiful and elegant pens I've ever held. My Memento Zero in Hawaii Blue is stunning, and my Waterman Amber Karen is incredibly elegant, but this almost defies description. I'm going to show you the unboxing and do a complete review coming up, but I want to rant a bit first. Not about the beauty of this pen, but about why a man can't appreciate elegant designs that might strike some as feminine. I showed this pen to my wife and she said, ooh, that's way too feminine for you. Of course, she wants the pen, right? <laughs> so who wouldn't? Then I excitedly sent a photo of the pen to my ink buddy in Toronto, Claudia, and she said, what, you're getting married? And yes, I have pens with sparkly, blingy crap on them, like my Pen BBS 323, Amber is a Cat, blingy. And one of my favorite colors is magenta. And yes, I like shimmering inks and watercolors and rainbows and crap like that. But I'm a man, damn it. And I want my girly stuff to get some respect. Oh yes, and I have some exciting news for you direct from the owner of Leonardo and the designer of this pen, Salvatore Motrone. So, let's take a good look at this girly pen and find out what's new at Leonardo right now. So this package has just arrived via DHL from Joost Applebaum in Laren, uh, Netherlands. Um, it's becoming my favorite place to shop for uh, upscale brand uh, fountain pens because it's uh, much less expensive and quicker turnaround and great customer service. All from uh, from Yoast. Thank you very much, Yoast. You'll start calling these my YouTube pens because this is my YouTube pen for July. I think it's July. And this, let's find out what it is. And of course, it is a nice green box from Apple Bomb. And it says, No one can write your story, so write it yourself. And we, ooh, I got two wafers. They're only a wafer thin. It's only a wafer thin. Stroop and waffle. And the box is nicely wrapped with the Apple Bomb label. Well, yeah, this is nice. Fatto a mano Italia. Nelly Officina Italia Leonardo. I think that means made in Italy by Leonardo Workshop Italian. That's a nice sleeve. It's nicer than your typical white sleeve that you put over top of the case. And then we have the black sleeve embossed with shiny Leonardo Officina Italiana. 
and then it'll be the case itself. And here we have the box and oh the nice brochure that matches the sleeve and there's the pen and there we are this is the finish called salt and this is a 1.1 stub same section as the memento zero I actually selected some ink for this pen and put an extra order in to Yoast, but the ink I wanted for it was a Diamine Jack Frost, which is one of the ink event calendar inks from Diamine, either last year or the year before. And I thought this is such an icy looking pen that Jack Frost might look great in it, but I might just have to put this Kyanite to Nepal in this pen until I get that other ink. I've got it in this pen as well. It'll make an interesting comparison. And we'll see how that stub nib writes. I'm excited. Can you tell? <laughs> so what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons and some measurements, and provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will discuss what I like and what I don't like so much about this pen. I know packaging shouldn't matter so much, but I did want to talk a little about the packaging of this Fiorari. I want to do a shout out and voice my kudos to the graphic designer or design team that came up with this box sleeve. The box inside is pretty much the same as the Memento Zero box, but this sleeve shows some really nice touches. The presentation is wonderful. This is a beautiful watercolor design and it's printed on watercolor type textured paper. I didn't want whoever is responsible for this to think that it goes unnoticed. These are upscale perks that make you feel proud of your purchase. The tones of yellow and blue are echoed on the side panel as well, where we have the logo Leonardo Officiana Italiana. And on the back, this marvelous blue and white flower and grapes motif. And of course, the shiny black lettering on a flat black design of the inner sleeve is in stark contrast to the bright colors of the outer sleeve, but it is, again, very elegant in its stealthy design. And the box itself is devoid of all markings until you open the box. Design worthy of the name Leonardo, in my opinion. And here is the little card that mentions the lifetime warranty against defects and the booklet is in the same charming design as the outer case sleeve and on the same really nice textured paper front and back it has the various furare finishes available in case you want to collect them all of course some people do that and on the inside page it says inspirata and luogo magico duve terra e mera si incontrano E molto pericoloso, signorina. Molto pericoloso. Which means inspired by a magical place where land and sea meet. Of course, they're talking about Ferrare, Italy. Ferrare is a town in the province of Salerno in the Campania region of southwest Italy. There's some pictures of that beautiful location. Here we go. There's a photograph of part of Furare with their wonderful uh, arched bridge that crosses these craggy fjords. Who knew that Italy had fjords? It actually gives the continent a really nice Baroque feeling. I have to think they give a lovely Baroque feel to our continent. And Furare is located on the Amalfi Coast. The rest of the booklet shows the various colors which are inspired by the Ferrari town where land and sea meet. We have blue smeraldo, emerald blue, rosso passione, red passion, giallo sole, yellow sun. Right, really nice tile mosaic of a fish on this page and 
Bianco Sally, White Salt, and Blue Galaxia, Blue Galaxy. And Yoast has added his Apple Bomb sticker to the back page, which is all very, very nice. And the back page also says that these pens are available in EF, EF, F, M, B, Stub, Calligrafico, uh, 1.5 millimeters in both 14 karat and uh, steel. The 14 karat seems to be in 1.3 millimeters, but I know that mine is 1.1 millimeters, so this must be an older brochure. Now let's finally look at the pen. This is a classic cigar-shaped pen in the style of the original cigar-shaped pen, the Schaefer Balance. What makes the shape of this pen unique is the girth. I'll do size comparisons in a moment, but let's just look at some other cigar-shaped pens to compare the girth of this pen. Here is my wife's Pen BBS 308 in white and gold. This is what you'd call a normal sized pen. And here is her Moonman M8, which comes close to the size of the Ferrari. This is a large pen. So I guess I should spill the beans at this point about my news regarding Leonardo. Just the other day, I had a messenger and email chat with Salvatore Metrone the designer of these pens and owner of Leonardo Officina Italiana. He and his operation are in Naples, Italy. The news is twofold. First, Leonardo is officially switching nib suppliers from Bach to Jovo. As Salvatore articulated to me, his father Ciro has had a long relationship with Bach going back to the Delta Pen Company and they had promised good quality with Leonardo. But it hasn't worked out that way. So Salvatore is switching. He is sending me two Yovo nibs to replace my Momento Zero nib and my Ferrari nib and for me to do a video documenting the change, which of course I'm happy to do. In addition to the news of the Bach Yovo change, Salvatore has announced the grande size of the Ferrari. Here is a photo of one in purple. It will be a piston filler like the Grande Momento Zero and it will sport an ebonite feed. I will be reviewing one of the new Gran Ferrores as well. Something to look forward to. But for the moment, let's focus on this Ferrari, now officially the small size. This is not, as I said, a small pen though. It is hard to look at anything but this exquisite acrylic. Just look at this, folks. It is not only chatoyant, it is pearlescent and almost opalescent when you hit the light right. Look at that. We have a cigar-shaped pen with a gold-plated bronze clip that has a small wheel roller, just like the Memento Zero. The clip is very springy and exits the cap without a retainer ring. The cap tapers up to about this point where it is straight to the end of the cap. And we have two gold-plated bands and this third gold-plated band is actually attached to the barrel. There's a tiny step down to the barrel, which is straight until about here, where it begins to taper to the pointed end. There's another gold ring right here that separates the blind cap from the barrel. The blind cap unscrews to access the butt end of the converter knob. This is really handy for just giving the feed a little push when you need it. But for filling, that knob doesn't quite stick out enough for me to uh, make me feel comfortable about using it for filling. And you don't want to lose that little piece. The barrel is engraved with Leonardo Officina Italiana and the number. This number is 3936. This is not a limited edition, but they are numbered. There are only two start points on the cap thread, so if you are obsessive compulsive about these things, you can line up the engraving with the clip. There's one click, and now it's on the back side. Another click, and now it's on the front side. He said. The cap unscrews with slightly over one turn just about one turn and just a tiny bit. 
and it reveals a section made of the same beautiful acrylic which has the same milk bottle shape as the Memento Zero. In fact, inquiring minds want to know, right? Yes, you can make a Leonardo of Facina Italiana Memento Zero Ferrore Frankenpen. Whatever floats your boat. Let's see. There you go. And yes, the blind caps do swap. The Memento Zero goes on the Ferrore, but the Ferrore seems to stick a little bit on the Memento Zero, so I wasn't going to push it. The section shape is not for everyone, but for my hand, it is perfect. And there is the number six size gold plated Bach nib. This is a 1.1 stub. And it is laser engraved with Leonardo and the logo wings, Italy and stub 1.1. And here is the plastic feed. The nib and feed assembly unscrew and can be swapped very easily. I have this extra Leonardo medium nib, which Jack has tuned up very nicely for me. And I can swap that into my Ferrari anytime I want to. The nib and feet are also friction fit into that collar assembly and can be pulled to swap in almost any number six size nib. We know that Bach and Yovo will fit. I do not know for sure about any other brands. The section unscrews to reveal the unique Leonardo converter that unscrews from the section and has a long gold plated piston handle which is also laser engraved with the logo Leonardo Officina Italiana. The mouth of the converter appears to be standard international but again I haven't tried that. The cap posts securely but I would refrain from pushing it as the acrylic is very thin on the end of this cap at about 1.15 millimeters. The pen is comfortable in the hand writing posted or unposted. The cap does throw off the balance a little bit. I prefer to write with both the Ferrari and the Momento Zero unposted. It is actually a pleasure to hold the cap in my left hand as I'm writing with the pen unposted. In a pinch, when needed, the pen is perfectly capable of writing posted for any length of time. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Leonardo Officina Italiana Ferrore with a Leonardo Momento Zero, a Pen BBS 308, the Moonman M8. and a Lamy Safari. Now let's look at them posted. There they are posted. And let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the Leonardo Ferrore Bianco Sale. And it is a 1.1 stub steel nib and the ink today is J. Urban 
Ionite, Du, Nepal. As I said in the unboxing, I purchased Diamine and Jack Frost to go with this pen, but it won't be shipped until my September YouTube pen comes in at Applebaum in the Netherlands. It should be a couple of weeks from now. Here is a glimpse of that pen. Looks fascinating, huh? Stay tuned. Here is the swatch for the Kyanite. And here is Robert Oster Bondi Blue and Diamine Asa Blue. Let's check the wetness. This is an extremely wet pen. And as to line variation, well, it is a stub. So you're going to get, especially at 1.5 millimeters, you're going to get a pretty wide vertical line and a thin horizontal line. Tons of line variation. Now before I go any further with the quote writing sample, let me tell you about this nib. Out of the box, the nib wrote. It laid down ink. But the line, especially on the vertical strokes, was inconsistent and would even railroad after a number of downstrokes. I captured it in this video. You can see it here fail a couple of times. I thought it might be feed related and I also examined the nib under my loop and saw the tines were slightly misaligned. This was a bit of a surprise as I had ticked the box for the nib to be tuned before it was shipped to me by Applebaum. Nevertheless, it was very inconsistent and a bit disappointing. I'm not as experienced with adjusting stubs as I am regular nibs, so I called my nibmeister guru friend Jack Hernandez. I sent him the video and some photos. He invited me over to take a look at the nib. He pulled the nib, pushed it around with his thumbs, slapped it back into the section and it wrote perfectly. He then put it on some micro mesh, not to polish it more, but to give it a little bit more feedback as he knows how much I loved this architect nib he ground for me on my Momento Zero. Thank you, Jack. Awesome service. Now it writes beautifully. And to our writing sample. And reverse writing. I don't know why you'd want to do that. Reverse writing with a stub. There's no point to it. That was fun. <laughs> and some quick writing. As you can see, it's very wet indeed and keeps up very nicely. And because of these thick and thin lines, I'm getting some wonderful shading out of this Kyanite to do Nepal, which has also got a shimmer to it. And before I get to some likes and dislikes about this pen, I want to show the difference between a stub nib and the Architects Italic nib. Here is my Momento Zero Architects Italic. It had a broad in it. It was a broad but I had it ground into an architect nib by Jack Hernandez. The difference between the two is 90 degrees. Here is the architect. It has a thin line vertically and a thick line horizontally. As you can see, lettering and numbers are a forte for this pen and the stub of course is thick in the verticals and thin in the horizontals as you can see it behaves 
completely differently. I'm finding quite quickly that my handwriting is much better with the architect than it is with the stub. It might have to do with how I hold the pen, I'm not sure. But I'm finding it more difficult to get used to the stub than with the architect. It is, of course, much better than it was out of the box after it got the jack treatment. When he fixed the alignment, he let me write with it for a moment, and it was very glossy and very smooth. Then he took it back and added some micromesh to it to give it some incredible feedback. It's really wonderful now. I just have to get used to the shape of the line it creates. But I will be getting a replacement Yovo broad nib from Salvatore that I think I'll have to get Jack to turn into another Architect Italic. What do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? This video is already really long, so I'll try not to be too effusive in my praise of this work of art. I am Italian. Sono Italiano in spirito. Ma ho esposato una donna che preferisce lavorare nel giardino a far l'amore appassionato un spallo grande. Yes, it is a pretty pen. Yes, it could be considered a feminine pen. But I think I have the right to love this pen as much as I admire the Schaefer pen for men. And besides, this pen has plenty of girth, and it's not small in the hand, so dainty it is not. If you think white and gold are too feminine, then choose any of the other colors. I think the bright yellow is a bit much for my taste, but taste is a very subjective and personal thing. I do love the shape of this pen. I can't decide which shape I like more, the Momento Zero or the Furore, so I refuse to choose. I like them both. The acrylic, regardless of which of the colors you choose, is incredible. Photos and video do not do it justice. The packaging is beautifully done, making this a superb upscale gift choice for any fountain pen lover you know. The fit and finish, the roller clip, hardware, the screw and converter, and the blind cap access are all wonderfully done features. This is just a very high quality handmade fountain pen. My quibbles with it center on the nib. As with the Momento Zero, the nib did not perform well out of the box. And it should, especially at this price. I am lucky to have a Jack Henderson just 10 minutes away to put his expert eye on a nib like this and make it right for ridiculously low service fees. Not everyone has that. Plus, people might give a pen like this as a graduation or an anniversary present. Perhaps it's going to someone who is new to fountain pens. Imagine the disappointment when a high-priced item like this fails to write. People who are not experienced with fountain pens might just smile and say, oh, thanks for the thought, and put it in a drawer. Of course, this pen comes with a lifetime warranty, and both Yoast and Salvatore stand behind their products and will make it right for their customers. That's not the point. It should write out of the box. The good news on this front is that Salvatore knows about these issues and is taking steps to address them by switching to Yovo. I'm excited and looking forward to getting the replacements for this and my other Leonardo nib with the new Yovo and being able to share that experience with you viewers. After all, it is you viewers that have actually put these amazing pens into my hands. It's, it's people that make the difference. Little people like you. And subscribing and sitting through the annoying YouTube ads is what powers it. Say, I'm annoying. Sheldon. No, no, it won't hurt my feelings. Go ahead, Amy. Say, I'm annoying. I'm annoying. I'm annoying. I'm annoying. Yeah, now, now where are you going? Look, you, you know you want to say it. Say it. Say, I'm annoying. Go ahead. Say it. Say it. Say it. Amy, say it. <laughs> well, she can't stand it when I'm right. Those ads generate the revenue that pays for these pens. And I will continue to reinvest that money into interesting content for you to enjoy. And I get a pen out of it. My pen, my pen. My pen, my pen, my pen. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.